cultural competence is not something that you 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 can actually find in in a store you know like it's you have to have contacts with indigenous peoples and try again to build that trust through the actions that I gave you earlier. Uh, this is going to be helpful into moving forward into the cultural safety continuum. Uh, the continuum actually outlines the progression from harmful cultural practices to creating a safe and respectful environment for diverse cultural groups. And that those, you know, um, that progression can go through different stages, uh, such as starting from, you know, the less uh, uh, knowledge that you have, you could, but then it goes up to going to be a, a cultural safe, safe person, which is, you know, who, who is a person who, who um, actually where the indigenous person feels respected and safe. And, uh, and that you feel that the person embraces uh, your cultural identity. So everyone thinks the same. Of course, like I said earlier, there's a continuum of cultural safety and cultural knowledge on indigenous people. Some people just don't know. Some people just know a little bit. Some people just say, well, I learned it at school, but I'm not sure that's true. And some people are really involved and get, uh, you know, uh, they, they really are interested and they read and they do all kinds of things. But... Of course, there are still stereotypes, uh, and some of them might be that uh, Indigenous peoples are less modern or reliant on outdated traditions, and we hear that. Um, and 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 I heard some people say, "Well, okay, it's been five hundred years. Get over it," you know, things like that. So these perceptions can actually significantly uh, affect Indigenous students' education uh, by creating a cultural disconnect in schools, uh, fostering biases and lower expectations and leading to fewer community engagement opportunities and stuff like that. So to improve the situation, hey. um, it's essential to integrate indigenous perspective into the curriculum again, offer cultural competency training for educators, uh, actively engage with indigenous communities locally, uh, promote an inclusive school environment. So addressing all those issues can actually uh, improve or enhance uh, the educational outcomes for the students. Um, so that's what I would suggest. I'm not saying every indigenous person is it has the same profile, right? So everyone is different, but generally speaking, there are different differences, cultural differences, such as uh, eye contact, for example, like a body language kind of uh, aspect of it. Uh, in, in, in a lot of people, indigenous peoples, well, direct eye contact may be seen as confrontational. So you need to avoid insisting on that personal space and be being respectful of a potentially larger personal space preference, not to be uh, too, uh, too, too close. Uh, the physical touch, it's less common. Um, and some gestures, you know, uh, like that uh, may be inappropriate. So it's just to be cautious of those codes and social in, in terms of social norms and people are communicating in a different way. Indigenous peoples are less, are more indirect and less confrontational. So the, the value of listening and being patient with the pauses is, is a very uh, respectful way of listening and communicating with uh, normally like uh, an indigenous person. The respect for elders is something that's really, really uh, recognized amongst uh, indigenous peoples and attentiveness to elders is something very special. Uh, the community and the collectivity is also more important than the individual. Uh, so you have to emphasize on the community well-being over individualism. This is a specific uh, social norm in, in uh, indigenous communities. Uh, storytelling, uh, spirituality, rituals, um, these are also social norms. I would recommend to observe and adjust your own behavior based on what you observed uh, and ask questions respectfully uh, about those different calls. You can ask an indigenous person, you know, what they prefer and how, it, how it, you know, how they're, you know, 
communicating skills are and you know and how how can i do better how can i communicate better with you so ask the question um to build and that would actually help building a relationship and a, a foster a, a trust a trusting relationship focusing on different key areas such as cultural awareness so we have to understand that there's a diversity of communities and understand the unique cultures and traditions of the various indigenous nations in Quebec and everywhere else um also the uh, indigenous languages you have to be aware that there are different languages and sometimes and most of the time by the way uh, the person's first language is not necessarily English or French it might be their indigenous language it's, it's important to know Cultural practices, respect, learn about local practices, like I said earlier, ceremonies, you know, be aware of that. So, and also the historical context. So there's a colonial history uh, that is generalized and it is very important for anyone to know and acknowledge the impacts of these this colonization and the history of residential schools because it had so tremendous impacts on the indigenous students and peoples today. Uh, inform and get get uh, yourself educated about treaties, land rights, uh, and the intergenerational trauma. So, um, and in in a teaching uh, setting, uh, you know what can you do is that into your 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 educational practices, you may integrate indigenous perspectives and collaborate with community members to teach in your classroom some of those things that I mentioned. Um, and also, uh, you can adapt your teaching to indigenous learning styles, like storytelling, for example. And you can also provide resources for uh, language education on indigenous languages. So it's all about building relationships, by the way. If you want to do something sp significant, you have to build trust again and through active engagement. And again, always involve the parents. It's a, it's an important issue. And a parent is in the community is not always just the mother and the father. There's the whole family. So uh, it, it all those things would help create a supportive environment for a student. Residential schools have affected a tremendous amount of peoples in Quebec, in different nations. Uh, the impacts of it uh, are actually also tremendous. Uh, yes, there are treaty people in Quebec. Uh, the Cree are treaty people. Like, I mean, it's a modern treaty, but it's still a treaty. For example, uh, the Inuit, the Naskapi, uh, my nation, the Wendat Nation has a treaty. So and then the Mi'kmaq people as well, and, uh, you know, the, the Ganyangahaga people as well. So, I mean, although there are not necessarily all modern treaties, we do have treaties, but it's it's a different kind of treaty, perhaps, uh, than what we call uh, the number treaties in the West. But it's, uh, it's still a treaty with the crown. And so we do have some of those treaties. I'm not a historian, but of course, uh, if someone says it's there's no treaty in Quebec or there's no... Uh, impacts of residential schools and well that's actually not the case so yes education educators actually should continuously educate themselves about indigenous cultures and build respectful relationships with local indigenous communities again and integrate indigenous perspectives into their curriculum with the guidance from indigenous experts. So that would prevent any appropriation here. Um, reflecting on personal teaching practices and being receptive to feedback from indigenous students and community members is also very crucial. Again, I was talking about feedback earlier and I since this is a great example of it. Um, and to avoid cultural appropriation, educators must understand the difference between appreciation and appropriation and ensure indigenous involvement in decisions about their culture, you know? So by fostering that inclusive and respectful education uh, environment, educators can definitely support and value indigenous identities and not being called appropriative.
I, and I, I have, I've been asked that question so many times. Uh, you know those earrings. <laughs> So uh, some of some women ask me sometimes that well you're you're an indigenous person so you can wear the um, the uh, earrings the beaded earrings I said well you can also wear beaded earrings well people say well I feel like I'm appropriating and is this going to be seen as I, I I'm, uh, I'm I'm in an appropriation no I say no because our all of our artists what they want is their crafts to be you know recognized and 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 people can buy them respectfully when it's authentic when it's made by an indigenous person and then you can be proud to wear them because you you, you are respectful to the artist that created that piece you know so this is being a, a very you know appreciative and not being in appropriation mode and appropriation mode would be the person making uh, those uh, earrings pretending that they're an indigenous person who made them, you know, so that's the difference.